Hello and welcome to Food Safety Fridays. My name is Simon Timpoli from the International Food Safety and Quality Network. This week, our guest presenter is Cor Gromfeldt, Market Development Director at FSSC 22000. And we're going to be discussing what makes a food safety management system effective. Um, so firstly, good afternoon, Cor. Welcome. Good afternoon, Simon. So good to be uh, together with you again in this uh, webinar. Great. And how's the Netherlands today? Well, we had some some rain. It was warm this week. Uh, now there we have a nice uh, sun. So I hope the weekend will be nice too. Then we can uh, do some uh, relaxing. Eh? Perfect. Yeah. So tell us where you're joining us from in the sidebar. Uh, you know, Emre from Turkey, Syed from Jeddah, um, you know, Canada, AC. Tell us where you're joining from. We're going to play the video ads and we'll be back in a couple of minutes for the presentation. Food safety accidents are a real possibility these days, meaning an increased scrutiny and rigorous testing on production and other areas. From farmlands to dining tables, each stage of the entire food supply chain is challenged by product safety, quality and effectiveness. Whether you're a grower, food packer, trader, or hold any important role in the food supply chain, HQTS can help you to ensure quality and safety from the source. Our services include product inspections, safety audits, quality management, and consulting and training. HQTS, your partner in quality. slides on thanks to the food safety friday sponsors um i'll be back um for the q a later but for now i'll hand you over to Ko. thank you so much uh, simon and uh, i will switch my camera off during the presentation but uh, later i will put it on again no again from my side a very warm welcome to everyone and uh, yeah it can be in the morning in the evening in the afternoon so uh, depending where you are and I'm very happy that you uh, you took the time uh, to join this webinar. And, and I like to uh, to share some some thoughts about uh, food safety management systems. First of all, a short uh, uh, overview of the topics of today. Um, a short introduction on on FSSC twenty two thousand. Um, then I like to talk about uh, yeah, what we call the harmonized structure, what was uh, designed by ISO, the International Standardization Organization. And then I like to go into food safety management systems 
yeah, and show you some uh, some principles and and yeah, the main uh, elements that make uh, food safety management system effective. Um, I also like to focus on uh, on FSC twenty two thousand because uh, there are some additional elements in FSC twenty two thousand, and then I like to talk about uh, yeah what are then the benefits of ISO twenty two thousand and FSC twenty two thousand. So these are the main topics uh, of today. And uh, I hope uh, it will be beneficial for you that it adds value to you. First, a short introduction of uh, FSC 22000. Yeah, we are um, owned by, uh, by the foundation, the nonprofit foundation FSC. And uh, yeah, we are a certification program, a certification program for food safety management systems. And I think one of the yeah, uh, uh, differentiators from, from other programs is that we uh, do not write uh, our own standards, but we use existing ISO standards. And I will explain that further. Of course, one of them, ISO 22000, is for us the most important one. Um, the good thing of ISO standards is that they're independent, developed by international experts, and there's a lot of commitment for ISO standards around the world, not only with, uh, with companies, with organizations, but also by, by food governments, by, by food authorities. Um, the Global Food Safety Initiative, uh, that is uh, one of the largest network organizations of manufacturers, uh, retailers, but also other stakeholders. They have a benchmark program and uh, they uh, do the benchmark of food safety uh, programs, food safety management programs, and we are recognized by them. And that means that there is a global acceptance for FCC 22000. And what is for us very important uh, is reliability of audits and certification. And therefore, we have a very robust integrity program that uh, together with our partners, the certification bodies, the training organizations, but also the accreditation bodies, we like to ensure the highest level of quality and reliability of the audits and the certification. And I think an additional uh, element, uh, what is not a requirement from ISO 22000, uh, for uh, almost all the sectors, all the categories, as ISO calls them, there are specific technical specifications uh, that are the requirements for pre programs. And we also uh, include them in our requirements. I'll explain that uh, later in this presentation. And uh, we cover almost the whole food supply chain. So I think this gives you an overview of what FSC 22000 is. And uh, this slide it has a lot of information, so I will not go through all of the details, but you will receive this presentation afterwards. Uh, on the left side, um, you see our partners, the certification bodies, uh, the training organizations, and the accreditation bodies. And you can see that uh, yeah, at the moment, we are almost at 30,000 uh, certified organizations. Um, so we still grow quite fast all over the world. Um, but I always say, uh, for us, it's not the, the quantity that counts. Um, when you grow, yeah, you can see that organizations appreciate us and they would like to use us. But most important is, of course, the quality. And, and that is what I already said, the reliability of the audits and the certification. We are governed by what we call a board of stakeholders. And uh, the board of stakeholders are uh, representatives uh, from the food supply chain uh, who use us, like manufacturers or retailers, but also organizations of certification bodies are there. You can find all their names and, and organizations on our website, and they um, are responsible for the governance of FSC 22000. Now, on the right side, you see the different sectors uh, where we are uh, active, the scope of FSC, and that is uh, almost from farm to fork. If you're located in Asian countries, I will say from farm to chopstick, I think that is better, but you can see that we cover almost the whole food supply chain. So without going in, uh, in a lot of detail, there's one more, more, more thing I like to say, and I think it's, it's, it's important but because we receive a lot of questions. We also have a program for small medium enterprises, for SMEs, and we call that our FSSC development program. And uh, again, if you want more detail, please go to our website or contact us. Uh, no time to go in all the details in this presentation, of course, but uh, you can always uh, go to our website uh, or contact us directly. Um, if you look at, uh, at ISO uh, and FSC, I think here is the connection. If you look at the structure of FSC 22000, you see that we have three elements. First of all, it's ISO 22000. So ISO 22000 uh, applies fully. So all the requirements from ISO 22000 need to be met. And, and, and the great thing of ISO 22000 is that um, it, it covers the whole food supply chain. 
to all food organizations, but also organizations that um, uh, provide services or deliver services like transportation, but even organizations that make machines. So all organizations that can have a positive or negative influence on food safety can use ISO 22000. And that makes the standard very unique. But there are some additional requirements, uh, what we call the prerequisite programs. And prerequisite programs, yeah, they differ in the, in the different sectors. And that's why ISO also developed the technical specifications for prerequisite programs for many sectors. And we use them too. So on top of ISO 22000, we also require the sector specific uh, technical specification for prerequisite programs. And then we have a third element, and that is what we call the additional FSC requirements. These are the requirements for the certification bodies. So that is yeah, where we ensure integrity. So all certification bodies that deliver FSC 22000 and also training organizations that deliver training, they need to meet our requirements. And we also monitor that, we review that. So they are licensed, formally licensed by FSC. And you find their names on our website. So there's a list of them on our website and you can find them and also where they are active you can find there and we also have additional requirements uh, for uh, organizations that want to be certified and that makes our program also flexible and uh, when the standards because yeah, we don't own the standards ISO owns the standards but when the standards are yeah, not, not uh, complete enough or there are new developments uh, uh, that are food, food issues food scares then we can add a requirement and we make um, our program flexible with that. An, an example, we have additional requirements for food fraud and also for food defense, two of the examples. But there are more. And again, you find all the details on our website. But let's go now into yeah, an ISO uh, uh, management system, and, and a management system uh, according to the ISO standards. And I think what, what, what was a great job from ISO is that they developed what we call the ISO harmonized structure. And that harmonized structure that is mandatory for all the management system standards of ISO. And you, you know ISO standards, of course, yeah, there are many of them. Uh, ISO yeah, develops standards, that is their, their business based in Geneva, but, but they have, of course, their members all over the world. All the national standardization organizations, they are member of ISO. And, and together uh, they, they develop standards by having experts from all these organizations working together. But an, an, an important uh, series of standards are what we call the management system standards. And again, I, I expect you to know them. You have ISO 9000 as an example, you have ISO 14000 for environmental management systems. We also have 45001 as for more occupation health and safety, and of course ISO 22000. And what ISO did, ISO designed the harmonized structure, and in the harmonized structure you find the requirements for all of these standards. So all of the standards, management system standards, they need to follow these requirements. And the document that is in the harmonized structure is called Annex SL. Yeah, what's in the name, but that's the name of the document, you can find it on the internet. But here you find the 10 chapters of that Annex SL, and that is the harmonized structure. So if you look at the management system standards, you will recognize these chapters in each of these standards, and also in ISO 22000. And that, of course, makes them harmonized and aligned. And, and a big benefit of it is that it also makes it much easier for organizations uh, to have an integrated management system. And more and more organizations, and, and it happens already in other sectors, but we see also in the food uh, supply chain that more organizations are doing that. They want to have an integrated management system, not only covering food safety, but also quality, environmental risks, uh, occupation, health and safety. And by using the ISO management system standards, it's much easier to do so because they, these, these standards are harmonized according to these chapters. Another thing that was, I think, a very good uh, step in the, uh, in the harmonized structure in the Annex SL is, and you see it on this slide, that there is a clear focus on a uh, plan, do, check, act. And I will give you some, some pictures later that, uh, that shows how that works. But the plan, do, check, act, uh, you all know that principle, of course, uh, is, is uh, found through, throughout the whole standards uh, according to the structure. And there is a clear focus on risks and opportunities leadership, planning and support. 
And I think these already are a number of, of elements of the ISO management system standards that ensures effectiveness of the systems. Um, what I always say, I've, I've been auditor for, for more than 20 years. I've, I've done a lot of audits around the world. And what I always say, um, if you want to have a system, first of all, the system needs to work for you. Uh, the management system has to work for you instead of you work for the management system, because then there's something wrong. And also, you should be able yeah, to, to, to have some, uh, some KPIs, key performance indicators that show, is your management system also effective? If you're not able to show that, yeah, even by measurable KPIs, I, I always say, yeah, then again, you should, you should rethink it because it should be clear and, and transparent that the system is bringing you advantage. And, and, and that is, I think, very important. And another thing, uh, if you look at, at management systems, yeah, if an auditor comes in, yeah, they, they come in for one, two, three, four days. That's it, once a year. And, and yeah, the auditor cannot make sure that the system is effective. So it's the case that when the auditor is not there, that the system is also working. And, and that's also important. So a, a, an effective management system should ensure that the products you are making or the services you deliver are safe uh, last month, last week, are safe today, but will also be safe tomorrow. And I think these are a few of the, yeah, uh, the elements that I find important in, uh, in these systems. So what are the benefits of that harmonized structure? I said it, it's a common framework. Uh, it aligns uh, across functions. Uh, it, it's applicable for all the management system standards. And, and perhaps you know, you know that in your own com company or in other companies, uh, if you look at, at uh, the different elements of, uh, of management systems, that a lot of organizations still work in pillars, uh, in pillars, sorry, that's the right word. Um, often you see that, that yeah, the quality food safety uh, managers are somewhere, and then you have the environmental people, you have the people responsible for occupational health and safety. Not in all organizations. I, I see a lot of improvements, but in many organizations, it is still in silos, in, in, in pillars. And I think that harmonized structure, that can make the bridge, the bridge between those different, very important elements of an organization, because let's be honest, occupational health and safety is as important as food safety. I mean, sometimes we say food safety is most important. And of course, we need to make safe food, but we also need to take care of our people. We also need to take care of the environment and we have to make sustainable products. So I think all these elements should have the same attention and that makes an, an integrated management system strong. It helps then also to speak a common language and approach in organizations. That risk and opportunity, I will go into that more in detail later, is a very important uh, part of, of effectiveness of that system. It helped also many organizations in the COVID crisis. Um, and I explained the principle in one of the next slides. Um, you can integrate systems and processes. Again, uh, why should you have three management reviews or, or three internal audit systems uh, uh, for, for three areas? Uh, you can integrate it. You can have a more, much, much more effective internal approach, but also an external approach. Because I know that, that many organizations that have that integrated management system, yeah, they can do an integrated audit. And certification bodies are also uh, offering that. And I, I remember I, when I was, uh, that was even, I think, 15 years ago, I did audits in a large global uh, brewery. Uh, will not say names, yeah, because that's not nice. That's not what I should do. But they already had an, a quality, food safety and environmental management system. And they had all the three certificates for that. And we went there with a team. So because you, yeah, I say you cannot have auditors. I think they're very, very rare that that can cover all these different ac activities. So we went in with a team with, with a quality food safety expert, with an environmental expert and with an occupational health and safety expert. And expert and we did in one week we did an audit with a team what was very efficient and very effective and i'm not saying you have to do it that way but it's possible and it saves time it absolutely can save time in uh, the audit so internal effectiveness and external effectiveness so i think these are a number of uh, very important uh, benefits uh, coming from that harmonized structure so let's then now look a little bit more closer at ISO 22000 eh, with the principles of that harmonized structure uh, in, our, in our backhead. 
the ISO 23000, uh, I, I assume you, most of you know it, but, but still here are some characteristics. It is a true food safety management system standard. Uh, I said it already, can be used from farm to fork, but also service organizations can use it, cleaning organizations, uh, organizations that control pests. Uh, it is applicable for everyone that, that plays a role in the food supply chain and has an influence on food safety. And that is, as I said, unique. It has that ma management system approach, I just explained it, and we have those additional technical specifications that are not mandatory, to be ISO 22000 certified, but they are mandatory when you want to be FSC certified. And that's a big difference. For ISO 22000 certification, they are voluntary. You need to have, of course, your prerequisite programs in place and, and you can use them as, as a reference document or fully implement them, but they're voluntary for ISO 22000 certification. They're mandatory for FSC 22000 certification. The risk-based focus and also continuous improvement, very important elements. And what I say, um, I always say, uh, there is no management system that is 100% uh, perfect. If I knew how to uh, develop such a system, I would not doing this webinar, but I was sitting on an island, sipping a nice cocktail and be a rich man. Nothing is 100%, but we want to be close to 100%. And we want to avoid failures. We want to avoid food safety scares. But when things go wrong, then the most important thing is that we find the root cause. And I think that's a very strong, one of these very strong elements of, of ISO 22000 and the other management system standards, that you have to do that root cause analysis to find the real root cause and to solve it, to have a corrective action in place that is effective. Again, measure the effectiveness of your corrective actions. Also, as I said, uh, you can uh, uh, make the integrated management system using ISO 22000 and the other um, management system standards. And what is very strong is that you should not only look at your own processes, if you have ISO 22000, you also have to look into your supply chain as well, upstream and downstream. You also have to think, are there any hazards and risks uh, uh, upstream or downstream in my supply chain that I have to influence. And, and I think that's very strong. It's not that you have to make the management system for your supplier. No, everyone has its own responsibility. But when you make baby food and you use spinach, well, then it might be important that you ensure uh, that the spinach is not contaminated with, with chemical uh, contam contaminants. So that is, that is uh, the things that you at least need to consider. And then you can ask a voice your supplier to control it. But, but it's more than looking only at your own processes and your own products or services. There's a very high international accept acceptance and use. There's still more than 30,000 ISO 22000 certificates out there. So uh, there's still a huge number. Uh, so many more than FSC 22000 uh, even. And also, uh, yeah, what you look at FSC 22000, uh, we cover uh, ISO 22000 fully. And that accept acceptance and use, uh, also, as I said, by many governments and, uh, and authorities. This is a pyramid, and they say, yeah, pyramids are important uh, in, in presentation. So this is my pyramid. Um, yeah, the animation doesn't work, uh, but you see the, the foundation of the pyramid are good practices or the prediction programs. Then you have the second layer of a management system, that's the HACCP uh, system, the HACCP principles, and the third layer of this pyramid are management, uh, uh, management system elements. So these are the three elements as I describe them being part of a food safety management system. And then you see in the, in the green uh, arrows, you see all kinds of, of documents or, or references where they come from, eh? good agricultural practices, manufacturing practices, et cetera, et cetera but also those, those technical specifications for the prerequisite programs, as an example, or the general principles of food hygiene. Now, for, for the HACCP uh, uh, part of the management system, of course, we have the, the HACCP principles. I think one of the best harmonized uh, approaches for, for, uh, for uh, hazard analysis and critical control points. And then the, the top of the pyramid is the elements of the harmonized structure, what makes it into a management system. So if you look at it from another way, then I say, well, 
uh, the good practices and the PRPs. Yeah, that's the basis. You, you, that's why we use the word prerequisite programs. You have to start with it. Uh, it is a prerequisite. If you don't have that in place, yeah, don't start with HACCP. That is uh, one of the first steps. Then when you also implement the HACCP principles, it makes it into a food safety system. And then when you also add those management system elements, you have a truly food safety management system. And that is how I, I like to explain how a food safety management system is built. And then you see, of course, the, the, the big arrow on the left. You see that uh, the yeah, full uh, food safety management system is ISO 22000 and, and FSC 22000 with some additional benefits. I think I already said it. We have those uh, those ten uh, elements of uh, of um, uh, the, the harmonized structure, and also when you look, this is the the content of the ISO 22000. Here you find the ten chapters that are covered in the ISO 22000, and you recognize them uh, the, the same elements. Sometimes the wording is a bit different. For instance, uh, chapter nine, uh, you see performance evaluation, and there you see of the food safety management system. And um, what you also see in this uh, slide is that uh, the, the real requirements, so the requirements for food organizations that want to be certified are in chapter four until 10. So there you find all the requirements uh, that organizations need to meet. And the other introduction on uh, chapters, yeah, scope, normative references, and terms and definitions. Uh, many people forget the terms and definitions when they read the standard. Uh, I also don't like it because it is yeah, not always easy to read an ISO standard, let's be honest. The first time um, I, I had to uh, yeah, do it four times over, uh, but uh, they are important. Eh? The terms and definitions, I always say, they help us to standardize and harmonize. And, and I think I still see in the world that, that there's a, a lot of different terminology used. Eh? What is a risk? What is a hazard? What is a corrective action? All these, what is a critical limit? Well, we think that we all know it, but I still see that there are uh, sometimes different explanations of that. And I think, uh, yeah, in organizations, very important that we speak the same language on food safety. So I think terms of definitions, although you might not like them, I think they are important. Now, this picture you also find in ISO 22000, and I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's I cannot go through it in detail, but it really explains the two levels of um, uh, planning and control. So if you look at the, the Deming circle, I said it already, plan, do, check, act. Uh, the ISO 22000 has them on two levels. And uh, they call them the operational planning and control and the organizational planning and control. Uh, the whole HACCP principles are in the operational planning and control Deming circle. And that is the, the circle on, 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 the, on the bottom of this slide. So there you find all these different principles and elements of the HESA principles, but you find them in the Plan, Do, Check, Act. And I think this is a very nice picture how you can see the whole HESA principles into a Deming circle. Yeah? So I think that is a very strong one. And you find that all in the chapter operations. And, and that is where you find all the HESA principles. But there is a second uh, planning and control cycle, and that is what we call the organizational planning and control. And that brings food safety management systems to a higher level, because there you do not look at the food safety hazards and food safety risks. No, you look also at organizational hazards and risks that can have a negative influence or a positive influence on food safety. And I think that is a, a great addition. So all the management system standards uh, of ISO have this. Uh, this is a great addition uh, to the food safety management system. And as I said, uh, when we had COVID, uh, COVID is yeah, in, in itself is, 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 is not a food safety hazard. Eh? It is not. But it can, of course, cause huge problems in a food organization. So when you have this element implemented, then also for new risks and new hazards, you have to get them through this cycle. And that will help organizations to be very uh, uh, yeah, uh, active in, in recognizing risks and making sure that they are flexible and they are uh, on time in implementing measures for those risks. This is uh, a little bit more details of that organizational risk-based approach, uh, HS from the harmonized structure. 
So it's interesting to see how the chapters of ISO 10,000 and the other management system, because you find this in all the management system standards, how they are connected. So the whole principle of organizational risk-based approach is in one, two, three, four, five, six chapters. And that's sometimes a challenge with ISO standards. You, you have to understand the principles because it's not one chapter covering this all, no. The, the whole organizational risk-based approach is covered in, in five or six chapters. But again, what is important is that you need to identify your external and internal issues. And also you have to identify who are the interested parties of your organization. And of course, the clients, but there are more. There are of course, many more food authorities, your suppliers, even your employees. So you have to identify who are my in interested parties and what are the requirements from those interested uh, uh, interested parties. And then in chapter six, you have to do a risk analysis. And that's not a risk analysis like HACCP. No, that's a risk analysis based on the, those identified external potential issues and internal potential issues. COVID is an external, was an external issue or is an external issue. And, and so you see that you need to cover it here and, do, and, and you have to um, evolve it into a, a risk analysis. And what is also, I think, um, a great um, element is that you uh, are not only have to look at your risks, but also at your opportunities. And, and again, that makes it much stronger because we, we, also want, we always want to look to, into risks, but we also have opportunities. And if we uh, look at opportunities and identify them and, and, and use them, yeah, then we can make also our food safety management system stronger. We can make our processes stronger. Yeah, so, so not only looking at risks, but also look at the opportunities. And if you have done that analysis, yeah, then you have to integrate it in the rest of the management system. And you see that in the circle. So you need to identify actions or measures for each of these risks and opportunities. You integrate it in your food safety management system. So there you control them that's, or you explore them if it's an opportunity. You need to evaluate if you're doing that effective. Again, there's the effectiveness again. And yeah, if not, you need to improve. And what you see here is, again, a plan, do, check, act. Well, I know this is a very, very short explanation of, of a quite complex uh, cycle, but I, I hope this picture helps you to understand it. Because if you understand this cycle, yeah, then I think you have the most important part of, of the new structure of, of ISO 32000 and, and the harmonized structure, you understand that. I will not go into detail this picture, but as a reference, it might be nice. I said already that uh, the whole HESA principles are covered in chapter eight, operations. Uh, and, and here you see uh, how that is uh, working. So this picture just shows you from the uh, traditional uh, HESA principles in which of the sectors they are uh, covered in ISO 22000. And I think that is also uh, helpful uh, to understand that they are all there. So ISO 22000 fully covers the HESA principles, and again, FSSC covers fully ISO 22000. Very short, but I think it's important. Um, food safety culture. And, and I think yeah, we talk a lot about it and we can, we can have five more webinars on this topic, but I think it's, it's, it's very critical. And I, I did a presentation in the past, I think it, I did a Q&A with Simon on this topic uh, last year. Uh, but what is important is that it's fully covered also in ISO 22000. The only thing, there is no chapter that is called food safety culture. The chapter is not there. So you need to understand where it's covered. And um, uh, uh, the GFSI, I said that, the Global Food Safety Initiative, uh, they have that, that benchmark recognition uh, program. So they have requirements for us as a certification program. And they also want us to cover food safety culture. And, and they implemented that, I think, a couple of years ago. And what we did, we did a an, 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 an gap analysis on the ISO 22000 in our own program. And we found that all the elements, and you see here the elements, commitment, communication, training, employee engagement, feedback, performance measurement, food safety related elements. These are the requirements that is also defined by the Global Food Safety Initiative. And we found them back in ISO 22000 already. So we did not need to add any additional requirements for that. And, and yeah, I think that that was, that was great. But the only thing is you need to understand where they are covered. Um, and what I uh, say, we, we made a guidance document. 
And again, I cannot uh, go through it in this presentation, but, but you can come to us again if you want more information. But you find the guidance document that you can freely download uh, from our website. And there you find exactly in, in what chapters or what requirements of ISO 22000 and FSC those requirements for food safety uh, culture are covered. But again, uh, I, I find it important uh, for an effective uh, food safety management system, you need to implement those requirements. Um, you can have the best processes in place, you can have uh, the best raw materials, you can have uh, everything um, uh, in place, but if you do not have the right food safety culture, you have nothing, eh? I think. So very important element and covered by ISO 22000. So um, I'd like to uh, conclude with the additional requirements that we have on top of ISO 22000 very shortly. I said it already, yeah? we also uh, make uh, the prerequisite programs, the technical specifications for, for each of the sectors mandatory. And we have a couple of additional requirements. Um, those those um, uh, sector specific uh, technical specifications, uh, ISO calls them the ISO 22000 uh, uh, 2 series and you find them for uh, most of the different uh, sectors. And they're all based again on the uh, Codex General Principles of Food Hygiene. Um, so yeah, it is, it is very recognizable. Eh? You find the requirements for pest control, for cleaning, uh, for uh, hygiene, uh, all these uh, basic prerequisites, uh, good manufacturing, agricultural practices are covered for each of the sectors. But that is great because yeah, every sector is unique and you cannot make one, you can have ISO 22000 covering the whole food supply chain, but you cannot do that with all the prerequisite programs. And that's why ISO developed those specific uh, documents for them. Here you find them, uh, again, uh, there's a whole series, uh, food manufacturing for catering, farming, et cetera, et cetera, transport, storage, retail. Um, all of them are ISO technical specifications, as you can see, and it's the 22002 series. There is one document that is still a, what we call a PAS, a public available specification, and that is a, a standard developed by a national standardization organization, BSI, the British Standardization Institute. What happened most of the time is that uh, in, in time that these national standards or uh, the, the public available specifications, when the members of ISO say, yeah, we want to use it also internationally, that they uh, change from, uh, from a pass, a public available specification to an ISO standard. And uh, it might also happen with this one, but still the content is, 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 is most important, of course. Then uh, finalizing the additional requirements, the third element of FSSC. So again, on top of ISO 22000, we also have some additional requirements and um, we'll not go in detail, but here you have a flavor of what kind of uh, additional requirements we have. And, and most of them are, yeah, because sometimes uh, they are perhaps, yeah, not, not in detail uh, described in an ISO standard. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we also need to meet those GFSI requirements. And then, yeah, we decided to add requirements in our uh, uh, scheme. And, and I said already, uh, food defense, food fraud uh, are examples of that. Uh, also, uh, on a number of these additional requirements, we, we have, again, great guidance documents. Uh, food fraud, we have one. Uh, food defense, I already explained it on uh, food safety culture. You can download them for free. And, uh, yeah, I think that they can be very helpful for you uh, uh, to, to look into that if you want to know more about uh, these topics. And then another thing that is sometimes, yeah, is, is different with, with some of the other certification programs. Uh, with with management system certification, uh, a certificate is valid for three years. And uh, there are also other programs where the certificate is valid for one year. That does not mean that there is no annual audit, because also with, with, with FCC and ISO 22000 audits, there is an, an, a mandatory annual audit. But the certificate has a validity of, of three years. The idea behind it is that the first audit, the first initial certification audit takes longer. And, and often it's a stage one, stage two approach where the auditor comes in first to do a document review. Most of the documentation will be reviewed and the second stage will be more the implementation. But the auditor gets more time for that. And the reason is, yeah, if you go for the first time, to, I was auditor. Well, it's quite complex eh, to, to do a full audit on a management system. 
So the first time you come in, I was very happy. I had more time as an auditor. And then, yeah, when the organization is, is approved, they meet all the requirements, they get the certificate, then the annual audit can be shorter. Yeah, you still look at, at all the elements, but perhaps you do more sampling approach. And then after three years, there is a recertification audit, and that is longer again. So there is a, a principle behind that, that that I as an auditor found very, very positive uh, to ensure that uh, that auditors have sufficient time, especially at the first audit and, and the recertification audit. I come to the to the end of my presentation, uh, Simon. So uh, I, uh, I, I I think I can I can meet my own KPI. Uh, that is forty five minutes max. Uh, yeah, these are uh, the uh, benefits of ISO twenty two thousand. And if you if you meet ISO twenty two thousand, it is great. It's a great standard. And if you implemented it uh, in the right way, you you really have a a, a great system in place. <coughs> Excuse me. So here you see the, the added values and, and, and the benefits. And, and of course, they also are for FSC 22,000, the management system approach. I think we covered it all, eh? the harmonized structure, those, those expert independence, codex, uh, continuous improvement, risk-based approach, supply chain coverage, uh, and it's more on the how and on results. Uh, some other programs, uh, they more have a list of, of, of mandatory requirements. Yeah, with an ISO 22000, uh, yeah, there are requirements, but you need to implement them. So, so it is it is a higher responsibility of the organization itself, how the risks are controlled, how the hazards are controlled. But it makes it also flexible because every organization is unique. But it's not a list with mandatory requirements. It's not a checklist approach. It's, it's really a, a requirement approach that you need to meet. Then you have FSC 22000, and there are some additional benefits. So if you have ISO 22000 and, and you really want to, to, to uh, yeah, upgrade to FSC 22000, it's a relative easy step. It's not, I'm not saying it's easy, but you have already ISO 22000 in place. That's, that's one of those three elements. And then you need to implement the additional requirements and the pre programs. But then you will have a GFSI recognition, and that's not with ISO 22000. And a lot of manufacturers or retailers require a GFSI recognition. So that's a benefit. Also, you will see that many of the global food organizations using it. Uh, we have a list of all the 30,000 certified organizations on our website. If you go there, you can find a lot of organizations, not only the big ones, also the small ones, but many uh, organizations use it already. Um, we have the visibility, uh, so you will be listed on our website, and, and that's, of course, a big advantage. So, so also organizations can find you, also what you produce, what is your scope. Um, integrity program, yeah, we have a very strong integrity program, and as I said, uh, it's more about the quality than the quantity. We want to have reliable audits and certification. Those sector-specific specifications are mandatory, but makes also the system stronger. Because if you read those documents, those technical specifications, you will find that, that it really is a great tool to implement your effective pre programs. And then collaboration with many international associations. We work with a lot of associations around the world. And also the, the agility, as I said, our additional requirements can make us flexible and, and agile. So that is also, I think, a, a big uh, advantage. A few more. Uh, we have um, uh, uh, the Global Post Farm. Uh, yeah, we, we there's the International Equitation Forum. Uh, that is uh, where all the equitation bodies are member of. They have also recognized us. So that is a signal that we are doing a good job. And that development program for small medium enterprises, because yeah, there are so many great small medium enterprises, and and we are so depending on them. They are so so important. And all organizations that cannot meet FSC twenty thousand in one step. They can do a kind of stepping stone approach. Yeah, to in two or three steps, they can grow to FSC 22,000. But they can even use it as a standalone conformity assessment program. Again, if you want more information, please come to us. We have also some addendums, like an uh, addendum for FISMA. So uh, we did a gap analysis uh, against the FISMA requirements, the Food Safety Modernization Act. Um, and, and the additional requirements on top of FSC are in the document, can be helpful when you export to the US or when you are, of course, based in the US. 
And uh, yeah, we are a non-profit foundation, and, and we know that that we uh, relatively we have a low annual certification fee, uh, and we want to keep it that way. We want to be an uh, a lean organization and uh, um, not too expensive. And I think that uh, brings me to the end of my presentation, Simon. Uh, so I hope uh, this was interesting for you. And uh, yeah, please, if there's any questions, I'm most happy to answer them. Okay, thanks very much, Court. Uh, <clears throat> there were some questions, but um, <laughs> I had a problem with my internet again and uh, it's refreshed. And so all the questions have disappeared for me. Um, so if you look in the Q&A. Uh, I have them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I, I'm, shall I just pick out a few, uh, Simon? Yeah. Yeah. If you can do. Yeah. 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 Well, there is a, a remark from uh, Gustavo saying, I think the revision 2020 of Code of General Principle Food Hygiene uh, uh, covered in the food safety culture topics. Yeah. I think that's correct, and uh, it's 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 uh, correct that we have now the revision of the the Codex General Principles uh, of Food Hygiene and also uh, the Hazard Principles, and uh, I think that also uh, covers food safety culture much much more. But as I said, it is already covered in uh, uh, in uh, in the ISO 22000, and we have that guidance document that that you can download that shows exactly in which chapter and what requirement you can find food safety culture. Uh, let me see. Uh, top ma management system is highly dependent on the top people CEOs. And most times these people are only after money. Wow. <laughs> How is the FSC 22,000 body responding to the, this? Most times they get away with anything, especially in the third world countries. That's, that's, that's absolutely a great, great question. And I said it already, leadership, eh, that's the, the, the name of the chapter. Eh, it's also in the, in the harmonized structure, but it's, it, the chapter is called now leadership. And uh, if you read the requirements there, they're quite tough. And then it comes to the certification body, because the certification body has to ensure that, that top management is also part of the audit. When I, when I did all this myself, uh, I, I always uh, made an agenda for the audit. And I, my, one of my first conversations was with the CEO. Or, or with, the, with the plan manager, with the highest in rank. And then and, and the quality manager called me, yeah, of course, sorry, but uh, he has to go out. And I don't know, perhaps he had a, a very important uh, appointment or, or he went out for some golf, or I don't know. <laughs> but I said, ah, sorry, uh, but, but then we cannot do the audit. And the quality manager said, we cannot do the audit. Nah, I said, nay. So what is important, what I want, want to say is that the auditor is also reviewing and auditing top management. And of course, it can also be a replacement, but at least it should be some someone from the management team or the board. Uh, so that needs to be covered. And also what the auditor must do is see if, if all those nice uh, objectives and, and all those nice words that are on paper, if they are really implemented. And, and I think so it's the strength of, of the auditor. The requirements are there. So I think the standard covers really leadership and, and commitment and engagement of top management. But the auditor needs to cover it. And, and if the auditor is not doing the audit at top management, yeah, then, then how do you know that it is implemented? So I, I agree with that, that comment. And yeah, I, I think this is the way that you could look at it. Yeah. Uh, let me see. And, and, yeah, and a lot of top managers are not only out for money, I think. There is also good top management there. Eh? Let, let's be honest. Uh, is it uh, compatible to use ISO 20000 in the USA with an SQF standard? That, that's a good question. Well, now SQF has its own standard. And so if you want to go for SQF, SQF is also recognized by the GFSI, but that is one of the, the schemes. They, they have written their own standard. And that's the big difference with FSSC. We did not write an own standard. And we used the international standard ISO 20000 and those other uh, uh, technical specifications for prerequisite programs. It's a different approach, and, and uh, we appreciate those international standards. They're independent, uh, they, they are accepted. So that is our approach, and, and other schemes have a different approach. So, no, ISO 22000 um, is not used in totally by other standards. I think we are the only one at the moment. Yeah. I can see some questions now. So, yeah, one from. Take I, over, please. I will, yeah. One from Michael. Uh, when can we expect the publication of FSSC 22000 ah. version 6? Great, great question. Yeah, we are preparing that now. So, so we started now with our first, uh, we did also a survey. So we did a survey and uh, I think it's almost closed or closed. 
but we did a survey uh, also to get input for, for version 6. And there are, of course, yeah, some mandatory requirements we have to meet. Eh? We have to meet GBSI requirements. We also have to meet the ISO 22003. This is also a new standard, eh? the, the, the ISO 22003. That is the standard with the requirements for audits against ISO 22000. And they, uh, they also revised it. So it was published a couple of weeks ago. And we also have to meet that, that document. Eh? So, so these are the things that we use as an input for version 6. Um, we, want, uh, we, we aim to publish it next year. So we will work on it this year. And it is our aim to publish it next year. And of course, when we know more exactly when and where and why, then, then we will announce that. But, but it will not be before the end of the year we expect. Okay, a question from Hatim. Uh, I, I have a certification organization in Algeria. What should I do to be able to give accredited FSC 22,000 certifications? It's a certification body, eh? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and they want to be recognized, I think, then, eh? They yeah. Want to be... yeah. Yeah, well, uh, everyone is, is free to, to uh, get, get a license for FSC 22000, but we have requirements. Uh, you can find all the requirements uh, in our scheme documents that can be downloaded for free from our website. So I would say start with that. Look at the requirements, download them for free from our website. But a few things are mandatory, and I, it's not a complete picture I'm, I'm telling now, but that's in the documents. But you need to have an accreditation, and that accreditation is for management system certification. So that is a mandatory requirement. Um, you can have a, a provisional license because, yeah, when you when you start with FSC, you cannot be accredited before you have done a number of audits. But then you get a provisional license if you meet all the requirements. And then you can, I think, in one year time, you, you can get that accreditation, something like that. Um, so, and, and, and there are some more requirements, but it's, it's important that you, that you get that uh, management system accreditation and that you meet uh, the requirements that we have in our scheme documents. Uh, so, so I would say without now missing things, please go to our website, download it, and you can always come to us if you have more detailed information. We have a, an info uh, email address, uh, we also have uh, representatives around the world, Simon, I've got to say that. So we have also representatives in several countries like Japan, China, uh, Latin America, North America, India. And, and you find all these people on our website. So you find also a way to contact them. So, so please come back to us if you have more questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, just answering partial, yes, we'll be issuing the recording and slides afterwards so you can uh, catch up with that. Uh, okay, Ishmael, um, is records archiving in ERP management systems such as SAGE advisable for use in documentation as per FSSC 22000? So, um, yeah it's a very specific one uh, i i don't know that uh, particular uh, system but uh iso 22000 and fcc are uh, do not have any requirements how to store uh, information uh, as long as you ensure that you uh, do a good re retention and you have of course a good uh, access and, and a good approval system for for these uh, documents or information uh, but but in, in principle, you're free to, to, to store or keep it uh, how and where you want. And that can be in yeah, uh, an electronic system or a paper system, whatever. So if, if that answers the question, that would be my reaction. Okay. Um, going back to senior management, um, Al Sam is asking, what are some specific questions you need to ask higher management? Ah, yeah, <laughs> this is a, this is a different training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. No, nah, no, but but now nah, first of all, there, there's something like policy and objectives. Eh? Uh, the policy and objectives is of course something that 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 gives gives uh, direction to an organization. So so you can you can talk about that and and see if if they cover really continuous improvement and 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 there is also a requirement to do a management review. And that's a very, very important process eh, in, an, uh, in a management system. And, and that's the responsibility of top management. And that management review, uh, that shall show the effectiveness of the system. So uh, you can also, uh, a very simple question is to ask the, the CEO, how do you know that your management system is effective? And that is a very nasty question. And you don't need to have any understanding of, of, of 
very difficult things. But asking the question, how do you know that this process is effective? That, that is, a, a, I think, a, a good question that you can use several places also with top management. That effectiveness, eh, I think that is that is the key thing that it's nice to implement the system. But but as I said, if, if the system is not bringing benefits, not, not measurable benefits, KPIs, uh, then then uh, I uh, I always scratch my head, you know. Okay. Uh, question from Lakshmikanth. My organization is going to verify by FSC 22,000. What can I contribute to them uh, as I'm a certified internal auditor? What can I contribute to them? To, to his own organization? Because yeah, he's I think internal... so, yeah. 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 Now, internal auditors play, play a critical role in, 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 in a management system. And, and if you want to go for FSC 22000, yeah, you could start uh, uh, using requirements from FSC 22000 in your internal audits. So I would say, listen, uh, look at, at, at FSC 22000 requirements, uh, try to add them in your internal audits and see if they are implemented and effective. So, so I think uh, if you, if you, before the certification body comes in, I would always advise to have a, a complete round of internal audits against all the requirements. And, and you can start with a gap analysis because yeah, a number of things that just need to be available, documented, whatever, or you can find them in the requirements in ISO 22000 and the other parts of FSC. Do a gap analysis, see if, if, if those elements, processes, documents are in place. And if you have gaps, now yeah, you can work on it. And I would also do a full round of internal audits eh, to see not only that the system is on paper, but that the system is implemented and working. So that, that would be my advice. And, and again, internal auditors are crucial in an effective management system. Okie doke. Our question from Abiodon. So I can have my documents stored on soft or hard copies? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't think there is any requirement to have any document on hard copy, but now I'm, I'm a dangerous comment, but I, I don't I don't think. No. no. OK. Um, Gilda, what are the categories that are not covered by FSSC 22,000? Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, we we'll have to think. Uh, a few, a few. Uh, machines. Machines is not covered yet. Services. So cleaning servers. Uh, uh, and from farming, we have uh, not the full scope. I think we have only animal farming uh, for milk. So I think these are from head, uh, the, the element, the, the parts that are not covered. Uh, we do a logistics, yeah? so, so logistics services, transport, storage, logistics is included. But, but by head, these are uh, the, the, the parts. Again, full detailed on the website, but, but I think that's an answer on the question. Okay, thanks. Noah, can you explain how FSSC integrity program is implemented in regards to certification from one part of the world to another? Yeah, uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I love this question because that, that is, as I said, for us most important. Well, we have our requirements are regardless uh, countries, regions, and so requirement, requirements are all the same. And, and we have a team of international experts. So we have, uh, uh, we, we first do a, do a, a review, of course, uh, a review. We also have an onboarding process for, for new certification bodies. And they need to meet our requirements and, and they are being reviewed uh, for this. Um, and for each new certification body, we do an office audit. So we, we have integrity auditors, we have an integrity team, and we have around the world several integrity auditors, not only in uh, the Netherlands, but also Australia, in America, in, in uh, different places. And, and each new certification body is gets an, uh, an office audit. They also need to be accredited. So the accreditation bodies are also reviewing them. That, that is the second one. And then uh, we do uh, several things like desk reviews. And we can sample, we get all the reports in our database. So we can sample reports and we can do a, a desk review. Um, uh, if there is an issue, we can do a witness audit. Our integrity auditors do witness audits. Uh, and every three years we do an office audit again. Yeah? So, so these are a number of elements of a very, very robust integrity program. And, 
and that is regardless countries, regardless uh, regions. So those requirements are for, for large, small, all certification bodies everywhere around the world. Thank you. Uh, Geraldine, is it necessary to have a documented risk register to address risk and opportunities? <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Um, yeah, I'm not a consultant. <laughs> Uh, but if it's not documented, and documented can be, again, it can be uh, digital or not. Eh? Documented doesn't mean it needs to be on paper. If that's the question, it doesn't need to be on paper. But yeah, if you if you do not have documented it, eh, and you can call it risk register, but but yeah, how can you then review it? Uh, so I would say, yeah, have, you, you must be able to show, of course, that you have uh, uh, identified and addressed the risks and opportunities and if it's not documented then for me yeah it would be i think impossible to review that and also for the organization itself eh? if you don't have uh, it documented how can people use it in your organization how can you go back after two three years eh? so I, I would say yes yeah okay uh aj does fsc get feedback from the public and how can one give feedback yeah <laughs> Well, most simple, send us a mail, <laughs> contact us, uh, everyone, there is, a, if you go to the website, it's very easy to send a message to us by clicking the button. We also have a newsletter for free, you can also there uh, subscribe on our newsletter, and uh, so I would say contact us. And, and if you are in a country where we have our local representatives, you can also contact our local representatives. I can assume in China, it's easier to, to contact our Chinese representative in Japan. You can so look at our website you find all the names uh, but you can always send us a mail and contact us and we we, we try to listen very very good to uh, to uh, all the comments uh, that we get okay good um victor can my organization change its certification body when they want to renew the certificate yeah, we, we, we are not, not involved in that, of course. Eh? We, we have a certification program and, and uh, the, con the contract is, is between the certified or the, the, the food organization and the certification body. But uh, from our requirements, from our perspective, yeah, you can change. Uh, but you have to check, of course, what did you agree with your certification body? And we don't know that, what's in your contract and your agreement with them. But, but we don't have requirements that you cannot change from certification bodies, as long as those certification bodies are licensed and recognized by us. Uh, and they need to ensure that they have, of course, qualified auditors, because also all the auditors that are used need to meet our requirements and we check them. And we also have a database that's not public, but we have a database with, with those auditors uh, and, and we check also if they meet the requirements. So yes, from our perspective, you can change. Okay. Question from Gen Z, can FSC 22,000 certification be conducted via desktop audit? Wow, good, good questions, good questions. Um, now, um, um, yeah, the, 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 there is, of course, with, with the whole COVID crisis, there was a lot of discussion about remote auditing. And uh, I don't know if you know, but, but uh, it is allowed to do a partly remote audit. And that is also allowed by the Global Food Safety Initiative. So uh, it's a hybrid model where you can do uh, the more document review and um, some interviews you can do remotely, but you still need to go to the site to do uh, uh, yeah, the site audit. You need to do that physical. And that's also recognized by the, by the GFSI. So a full remote audit is not recognized by the GFSI. What we did as FSSC in the time that, that COVID was on, 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 on the highest level and some countries audits were impossible, it was, was not allowed to do an audit. And then we, had a choice and we said yeah we can now say uh, full remote is not allowed by GFSI and, and that is true uh, but yeah what is better no audit at all or a full remote uh, review of the company so in in cases of of uh, incidents so it's really if it's really crisis situation and that is still in our requirements a full uh, remote audit is allowed but it's not GFSI recognized that is important um, um, so um, a desktop audit only, uh, yeah, then you are not recognized by the GFSI. And it's only allowed in a crisis when a physical audit is not allowed at all. That is how we look at that. And again, we have a document on, on our website uh, exactly explaining the rules for, for partly remote uh, audits and also the use of, of uh, electronic uh, devices, uh, because that's also critical. 
uh, you, you need to ensure that you can still have an effective audit. Uh, so there are quite some rules to how that uh, partly remote audit has to be performed. That's all in that document. Okay. Um, question from Dam Jeet. Uh, in the new HACCP guidelines, CCP decision tree is removed. How will it affect on food safety management systems? Is that, yeah. in, the, is that in your scope to answer that here? Or? No, in, in, in principle, it will it will not change because perhaps the decision tree, uh, but but the principles of uh, the hazard analysis is still there. Uh, and the decision tree was 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 a tool a tool that could be could could could, could be used. Eh? But also, some people said, "Yeah, I, I find it difficult to work with the decision tree." The decision tree has never been mandatory, never been mandatory. It was it was a tool that could be used. The hazard principles they are mandatory. And there, there are some some changes, and and uh, yeah, we are also looking at that. But but in principle, uh, HACCP is covered in ISO 22000. So if uh, the Codex uh, principles uh, change ISO 22000, and that has not been done yet, then we will change, of course, also because we use ISO 22000. So it's more more up to ISO 22000 to see if there is any changes needed in their next revision. Because of the vision of, of Codex, but but again, uh, the fact that the decision tree is not there, that doesn't change the HACCP principles. Uh, no. Okay, I don't quite understand this one from Myrna. If my site is certified to twenty two thousand, I got asked to validate my facility layout and construction so I can support my evidence that I implemented the site regarding TS twenty two thousand dash one. Is well, yeah, 20, 20, uh, dash one. I, I'm not sure because I know the twenty thousand two part one. I don't know twenty two thousand dash one. I don't know that. Perhaps you mean the twenty two thousand two part one, and that's the technical specification for prerequisite program for food manufacturing. And okay. uh, yeah, you need to implement those requirements. And yeah, it depends what you mean with with, with what is it, what is validation. Uh, I'm asked to validate my facility layout and construction. Yeah, then then I I need to understand what what you mean with validation. And for yeah. for us, you need to implement the requirements of the standard. And if validation is checking if you meet the requirements, I, I would say yes. But it depends. The word validation, uh, yeah, has has some some uh, other meanings. Eh? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, coming from Emre about uh, obviously is uh, located in Turkey. Um, how does FSC support other languages? Because it's saying that um, it doesn't support Turkish and Turkey trades with many countries. What do you think of this problem? I don't see the question, I think. Uh... Oh, sorry. No. Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry. sorry. No, it's okay. There we go. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> sorry. This is something that we are discussing at the moment. Uh, you know, it's always a challenge eh, to, to have uh, your, your scheme translated in in languages. Uh, we have translations in several languages, but not all the languages in the world. Uh, so we are also looking at, at some new techniques. Eh? You have Google Translate, and you have other possibilities, of course, to use. So we, we are we are reviewing at the moment how we can have more translations, how can we, how we can improve that. But that's, that's a challenge, of course, to have all translations of all, because everyone wants their own language in, in the documents. Uh, the good thing is that ISO 22000 and also I think most of the technical specifications are often translated by the local standardization organizations. So that part is available, I think, in many countries in the local language. But the additional requirements yeah, from FSC, and that is, is some uh, languages translated, but not in all. I have good news for Turkey uh, that we are also working on representation uh, in that area for FSC. And we will announce uh, that that uh, very soon, but we want to expand also our representation to that uh, region, and uh, I think that's very helpful for uh, for for Turkey and uh, and the countries uh, there that we have a local representation and that uh, that, that there's someone who can then help also uh, people uh, in that country. Brilliant. Okay, that's it. So really appreciate your time today, Cor. Uh, yeah. We've run a little bit over, but well worth it. Lots of good questions. So thank you. 
Thank you, Simon. It's always a pleasure to work with you. It's a great initiative from IFSQN. I love the Food Safety Fridays. And uh, thank you all for joining this, uh, this webinar. And uh, as I said, come to us and, and if you have any additional questions and uh, hope to see you and meet you somewhere else. Nice weekend, nice evening. Thank you so much. Thanks, Carl. Okay, uh, I've put your certificate in the sidebar. Uh, I'll be following up shortly with an email to all registrants uh, with the recording, the slides and your certificate. So don't worry, just give us half an hour to do that. When you do you get your certificate, you can either print and sign it your own name or edit it in image editing software. So thanks for your attendance today. Uh, watch out for your emails for the next upcoming webinar. So have a great rest of your Friday. Enjoy your weekend. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.